So that was okay. it. He's, he's pointing out the dogma. Mm. If, if science is formed, physics has now become dogmatic in trying to stick with what Einstein was saying, and it's trying any trick it can to do it. And one of the tricks was to define the speed of light as constant. Okay. And it's not in the original. All right. Original thought. All right. Do you think that's just an accident? Why they are teaching, let's say, a, a blinkered view of physics? Or do you think there's reasons why they're, they're doing it that way? Do you, do you think they're trying to hide inf information about the true nature of reality, in other words? It, it, that, is, that is a big possibility. Uh, that that, that the, the phys people who are working in places like called Area 51, they know physics is completely different to what they've been taught in the mainstream. Right. That is a big possibility. And so they're, they're trying to then, the Americans are trying to keep that locked in and they don't want anybody else to know about it. Right. And that that's a military advantage to them to do that. Right. And so maybe that's what they're doing. They're trying to divert the academic world to go off onto these wild goose chases while they've got their select few of scientists who know what's really going on. Right. Yeah. And Sheldrake talks about t or researchers telepathy yeah. and m memory Mm -hmm. and where memory is stored. He believes that there's a morphic field and that, that your long-term memories are stored outside of the brain, mm -hmm. uh, resonating in space. Yeah. Morph morphic resonance, he calls it. And I know that Sheldrake has had, um, well, ha has been in contention with some people in mainstream science and, <laughs> and has had some successes against them in public debate. Yeah. But that's never put out on TV in the mainstream. Yeah. I think uh, when Sheldrake talks about morphic fields and that, that sort of morphic resonance and that really ties into a unified field where you've got uh, gravity, e electromagnetism, they all should be tied into a field and so maybe what is ha happening from the mind is being opposed on that field as well, not just upon your body, but that, that is sort of outside of what you were, they're trying to impose on us from from right. Einstein at the moment, so it's a sort of like different physics, and it's. So are you, are you touching on the phenomenon of consciousness here? Yeah. Right. So would you care to um, speak about that a little bit, Roger? I don't no. really. I'm not really into that sort of area. Right. Right. We, we, my my sort of thing is sort of like well, we we've, we've been working on Einstein for for a hundred years or more, and it's sort of like built on something which is wrong. Right. And so you need to go back earlier and then build on what was earlier than Einstein. Right. Uh, w one of the things which uh, Nassim Haramein points out, and I, I find this quite amusing, is yeah. uh, the Big Bang and about how um, the expanding universe in, in physics textbooks or in perha well, perhaps cosmology textbooks or astronomy mm -hmm. textbooks, they show, they show the expanding universe more and more space being created over time yeah. and they have all the mathematics for it and they, and they have a guy who's they have actually have it as a balloon, like the, it's an analogy to a balloon. Yeah. The surface area of the balloon increases as it gets blown up, mm -hmm. and there's a guy actually blowing the balloon up, and the physicists are all working on the equations for the balloon, and he says he's at his physics conference, and he says, "What about this guy here? <laughs> so why haven't you got any equations representing the guy who is um, no, causing no. the expansion of the universe?" Yeah. And his point being is. If you've got an, a, a massive expansion of the universe, you must have the lungs, which is a contraction. So in other words, everything is always in equilibrium. If there's a big bang, there's got to be a big collapse somewhere else causing the big bang. Do you see what I mean? Mm. I don't know where you stand on the, the big bang theory and that kind of thing. Um, you've got cosmology at the moment built on Einstein's work, which is relativity and so forth. Mm -hmm. and, and they're trying to add quantum physics to that with people like uh, uh, Stephen Hawking. And then, then I've got people like Stephen Crothers who's pointing out what they're saying general relativity is really mathematically nonsense a lot of the time. So, but if you sort of like jettison that attempt at cosmology and go back to an um, earlier Newtonian physics model based upon Boskowitz's extended work, then his theory is about an attractive and repulsive force. Mm -hmm. And so if you've got a sort of like expansion, then it would probably, you'd be having a, rep 
repulsion happen as well. Eventually, you sort of like have a balance, and maybe it collapse, mm -hmm. and then maybe it gets a certain size, and then it expand again. And so yeah. it's what I think a professor Rosler talked about as a breathing black hole. Mm -hmm. So it's a non-standard uh, black hole. Right. It, but. I mean, there's huge controversy over black holes now yeah. with the electric universe yeah. uh, people. It's gen what, what you have, you've got general relativity, and when they talk about black holes, they, they mean it from um, general relativity. But uh, Stephen Crothers, if you need to talk to, he g goes into a lot of explanation that the person who, who they get the mass from for black holes is Schwarzschild. Right. And it's just and they say this is a black hole solution, but when you go back to Schwarzschild, it's a completely different equation. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to foster on us that, uh, that Schwarzschild gave us the black hole when his equation is completely different. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like more forces put in front of us again. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned Stephen Hawking there, and yeah. funnily enough, I was um, <laughs> I, I was drafting out my interview questions for Roger last night yeah. in the pub, right? and a guy comes up to me, a drunk guy, puts his arm around me, and he goes, "What are you doing there, mate?" I said, oh, "I'm I'm just writing some notes." He says, "What's that for?" I says, "It's yeah. for an interview." He says, "Oh, a job interview." I says, "No, no, I'm yeah. interviewing a, a, a guy about um, physics and Physi uh, yeah. and and, uh, okay. and he went, "Oh, you mean the like the guy in the wheelchair?" Right, so is people associate physics with Stephen Hawking. He's almost like a modern day Einstein. What's yeah. your opinion of uh, Stephen Hawking, there, uh, Roger? D uh, do you have an opinion? Uh, well, oh. well, he, he, he seems to be open to things, but he's still really working upon the mainstream point of view of physics and his massive books like that, which he's sort of like building upon. He's building upon what he's been told, taught about relativity, and so he's building upon which from my perspective is has been a fundamental mistake at the very beginning of it mm -hmm. and so I, I want to uh, go, go back to earlier but right. there are other people who are working on unified field theory like this person I, I got Dr. Lau right who contacted me mm -hmm. and he's had masses loads of uh, papers published in uh, science journals, mm -hmm. astrophysics and so forth I think and he's expla his explanation is that Einstein made eight major errors in relativity. Right, and he's trying to correct them. Uh, well he's corrected, he's done, done the experiments and he says he's corrected it right. and he's got a unified theor field theory. Mm -hmm. So his point of view then is that Einstein made those mistakes but the people who came after him made even more mistakes so it was a, it's a massive layers of mistakes and if you go through the papers he's citing he's arguing with these other relativists saying they've got it wrong right relativists yeah. okay uh, <laughs> now now the, the 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 unified field theory i'm going to just throw in a philosophical point here yeah what all of these physicists are trying to do with this unified field theory they're trying to describe what is reality yeah Right, they're not looking at why it's there, are they? They're just trying to say, well, how can I write an equation yeah. which which will predict what's going to happen in the future? In other words, how is this thing functioning? It's functionality. Yeah. They're, they're, they're describing what it does, mm. what reality does, but with equations. They're not describing why. Why should wh why it's there, are they? Do you, do you see do you see where I'm coming from? Once they've got you see, I guess you have to answer that question, what is reality, in order to then ask the question, well, why is reality there? Well, uh, yeah. Do, do you see what I mean? Well, you 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 could work if you, if you re really hard, I suppose you could work out what the equations are the universe are following, but but then that describes what's happening. But then you can ask yourself, why is the universe following those equations? And not following some other equations, yeah, and that, that's all I get really deep. And then mm. you're getting into people saying, "Well, maybe the universe was designed, for intelligent design." Or then other yeah. people say, "No, it's random. It's the universe coming into existence. It's the only one possible." Well, and it's all I mean, the it, other possibilities. I mean, if you, if you can get that unified field theory in one in one equation, yeah, some people would say, "Well, that it defines everything that there is. It defines yeah. God. It defines us. It defines." everything yeah. in that one equation but it still doesn't tell you whether it came out of someone's mind or it's just existed forever 
or, or why it's there. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. The, 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 in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, it says that, that there's a theory that whenever a person actually discovers the theory of everything, it's immediately replaced by a more complicated one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, the, with unified field theory, you can just carry on working. You can with with uh, with Boscovich, I think he does the basics of a unified field theory and it's sort of then further work on that and it gets get more and more complicated the further you go on to it. Right. But you are still basically stuck with the maths describing the universe. Mm -hmm. And so why you, you sh this de why is the universe like that? You, you never can know just from the maths, can you? Right. <laughs>